Did you know that if you took this 3D printed turtle through TSA right now, there's a good chance that their machine vision system would label it as a weapon. That's right, do not take this little turtle through any security checkpoint unless you wanna set off an alarm and be detained. And I get it, that doesn't make any sense at this point in the video. But I'm gonna explain in this video why artificial intelligence can see something in the very small details of this 3D printed object that are beyond human comprehension that make it so it classifies the object not as a turtle, but as a rifle. And to be clear, this isn't a coincidence, an abnormality, or an accident. This was by design. This little guy was actually engineered by machine learning experts with the pure intention to both look non-assuming and also cause chaos to any artificial intelligence based security system. Crazy, I know. Look at that little guy. He looks like he can't cause any damage. But trust me, he can. This little guy, he'll mess your life up. Cowabunga. And that's as a warning as to just how weird it can get when we let artificial intelligence based camera systems classify us. All right, I'm gonna go put him in the background. You probably won't be able to see him because of that low F stop in this camera, but he's gonna be right here in the background the whole time. Don't worry about it. Okay, so what you're looking at here is an artificial intelligence vision system that is classifying the objects that it sees on screen. So originally there was a neural network, it was trained with video footage and it was told through human labeled data what objects were on the scene. And then once it's trained, we can give it new footage and it can take a statistical guess as to what it sees on screen. So now look in the bottom left of this video and you'll see that there's a histogram. So every object that it knows of is statistically relevant, but only the top three, the things that it thinks are most likely to be seen on screen are shown and with the histogram on the left, it gives you a sense of how confident it is in what it sees. Now, first off, as a human, I know that I'm seeing a turtle, but honestly, to tell you the truth, I could never in a million years tell you the three types of turtles that it's most likely. I just don't have that much knowledge about turtles. Dude. But right now on screen, it thinks that it's a terrapin turtle more likely than any other type. And if not, it's a mud turtle or a loggerhead turtle. Sounds close enough to me because I look at it and I just think turtle. I like turtles. So I would say with essentially 100% accuracy or incredibly high accuracy, it is correctly identifying the object. So every time you move and rotate the object, you get more of a sense. Like if this actually was a 2D image, you might not be able to see the full context, but as I turn it, you learn more information about the fact that it's a turtle. You just become more confident. This happens all the time when you see something out of the corner of your eye and you think, oh, let me look at it. A little bit of motion, you move your head, even subconsciously just to get more angles on it. It helps you develop a confidence. So now let's move from a single frame forward and see what happens to the machine learning model when we do that. Okay, so just simply the things around the turtle, the fingers, the shadows, those are adjusting its statistical confidence. But right about here, we finally get like which type of turtle is it, but we're still talking about a turtle. It's doing a great job of classifying the object. So different classification systems obviously will have different training data and they'll have different accuracies. So just to put a perspective on it, what we're looking at is called Google's Inception version three classifier. This is actually pretty old. This video is from like almost four years ago, but it does a great job of showing you kind of how the system works. Okay, so there's lots of different machine learning models out there. There's different neural networks that have been trained on different data to classify objects. So this in particular is Google's Inception V3 classifier. Call it a classifier because it's classifying the objects that it sees on the screen. Well, duh. That's the main goal of this neural network. So now let's pick this thing up and see what happens when we show all the different angles. All right, ready for the drama? I'll come in, so I'll come in like slow motion style. Okay, so here it is. It's still a turtle, it's still a turtle. The finger shows up all of a sudden. It's still a turtle and then what? It's a thunder snack. I don't even know what that is. Is that like literally a snack? It's a slug maybe? If it's not a thunder snack, then it thinks it's a slug. Like, what do you think a thunder snack even is? Like a, like something you'd eat or like, is it the way thunder works? I don't even know. I don't even know what a thunder snack is, but that's a pretty big jump. I mean, I might, even if I didn't know like what fingers were or if it was a turtle cause too much of it was obstructed, I don't know, a thunder snack, a slug, or a ringneck snake? I don't know, it's probably snake, right, S-N-A? 
That one I kind of get, like the head of a turtle and the color variation, and if you're not showing the whole, like kind of round part on it, maybe I could see how it would be a snake. I don't know what a thunder snake is, but maybe, maybe a snake if you were really, you know, had bad vision. But as we go through frame by frame, now it's a band-aid. How did it become a band-aid? Just because you see the fingers there, you're like, mm, maybe a band-aid. Okay, I kind of understand that it might be kind of a band-aid. I could see that being like maybe a band-aid hanging off a finger or something, but I definitely don't think it's a sandal, and I definitely don't think it's a mini skirt. So these are pretty wild classifications. I mean, in my mind, they're just super off, but it's a machine learning, right? We have to think about it differently. It's a statistical machine. It's classifying an object. Uh, it's a computer mouse. Mm, yeah, I guess, it, you know what? It kind of looks like a computer mouse, like with a hand over it. I kind of see that one. Okay, even though we were teasing it without the hand there, basically the original model does see it as a turtle. A thimble? I don't know if that's a thimble. There's your Band-Aid again. Another snack? What is going on? Why is this thing so hungry? Uh, a little confused at that sideways angle, but even when that turtle is, you know, turned upside down with its belly showing the screen, it's still got a lot of confidence in it. I mean, it might be a snail or a tree frog, but, oh, maybe it does think it's a tree frog actually. But anyways, overall, I think we'll see turtle kind of come win here. Okay, but just showing the belly of it here, you can see for a lot of frames, it does classify it correctly as this turtle. And look, even when it's pretty far off like this, like the alligator, the hot dog, or the band-aid, you can see the low confidence it has. And then just a small frame rotation here, and all of a sudden, boom, all three are just like back to pretty high confidence that it's a turtle. But honestly, look at all these frames. I mean, to me, it seems pretty accurate in the sense that it sees it as a turtle at all of these different angles. Dude, when it's not hungry for snacks, that is. Oh, wow, well, it really thinks that's a snail. So here's the challenge for the comments below. Is there any way you could imagine Imagine that that would be a snail if I only give you that single frame. Just look at it, think about it. I really couldn't, I don't think that's right, but it's really confident about it. Also, as long as you're down there making a comment, if you don't mind hitting the subscribe button, I think we're at like maybe seven, yeah, 702 subscribers. So obviously if I'm ever gonna make enough money to survive on this YouTube channel, I'm gonna need a lot more subs. So, uh, you know, you'd be doing me a solid if you hit that uh, subscribe button. Either way, back to the video. Okay, now to the punchline. Black screen building suspense. Boom. Check out the histogram. Crazy, huh? Super high confidence. That turtle that you're looking at on screen is a rifle. I mean, at first, I know your instinct might be to kind of like zoom in on the shell and be like, is there something about that that looks like a handle or a barrel of a gun? Or is there something about that that could be another type of weapon that it's like confused with, but you just won't see it. Like there's just nothing about that that will actually register in our human brains as a weapon. And that is one of the main distinctions that I wanna talk about when it comes to machine learning classification systems and a human who's classifying things, living life and understanding what a turtle is, what they do in the real world. We have some kind of sense of what their shape is and their form factor and how they move. And that informs us in a way that a machine that was only trained on other video but classified doesn't have. And that's why something about the way that it was actually perturbed, we'll talk about that word in a second, to become a trigger. But that's why there's something that was designed into this to actually purposely trick the computer. And that's why this neural network, although it's great at classifying things, it sees patterns in the video that are incredibly accurate in some cases. It doesn't actually know the object in the same real world, three-dimensional sense that we do. I'm gonna do my best to explain why it sees it as a rifle, even though there's actually not a total answer to this, but I'll give you some context for why it is in a second. But first, I wanted to show you one of the most amazing things to me is that it's not just a single frame that you show and it says, oh, that's a rifle. It wasn't manipulated in just such a way to trick the artificial intelligence system. It was manipulated in a way to trick the system into a 3D object that it can see from all angles. And to me, that was really surprising. So check this out. It's very confident that it's looking at a rifle and even if it wasn't, it's second and third best guesses are a shield buck or a revolver very far off the mark, but still in the same grouping, which is interesting. So as the camera moves around a little, some of its primary assumptions are moving, but in most cases, it's still a weapon. And I know it feels like, what is a weapon in there? Like I see revolver, I see shield buck, I see rifle over and over again. But remember, this is a 3D printed object, so it's not just a photograph that's been manipulated. So in a minute, I'm gonna come back to this adversarially perturbed model, because when you realize this is actually a 3D object, something that was created digitally first and then 3D printed into this turtle, that it could 
could also be as a 3D file manipulated by a machine learning system, but one that's adversarial to the one that's classifying it to actually make it something that it's not. But look, even through different symmetries, it still sees it as a rifle from multiple angles. It's not just like an image that was manipulated in such a way to show, it really, in even multiple angles, you can pick the thing up and you're seeing that it's still a rifle. A revolver is always in the top, spindle, but even the side of it, it still sees it as a rifle. Over here we go into a rifle as the second choice, thinks it's probably a cockroach, but then boom, even the bottom. Look, it's a rifle right there. Okay, I mean, okay, I'll give it that. It looks like a totem pole. I don't know why, but that doesn't last very long. And look, even when you're showing the belly, you still see rifle in the top spot, rifle in the second to top spot, and rifle back in the top. Like, what is going on, you know? I mean, look at this, from all the different angles, it's always seeing it as a rifle. It's absolutely scary and mind-blowing and incredible and just so weird. Something that we really need to get our head around when we think about how computers see the world that are trained and learned about the world through a specific flat data source as opposed to us, people who have been in three dimensions our whole lives and learned from data sources that are constantly in flux and moving and we have a lot of other context senses to, to draw from. Okay, so back to this frame. Now, if you look at the top right, I wanna talk about what it means to be an adversarially perturbed model. So when you get your head around the fact that this is a 3D printed object, okay? This isn't somebody who like crafts turtles and just made this. When you get your head around that, this is actually a 3D object that can be manipulated in three dimensions and a second neural network, one that specifically was built to deceive the first neural network could have made slight changes to it to mess up the statistics of the first one. It was originally a model of a turtle. The adversarial part is that a different neural network with the actual goal to make this thing a weapon came in and said, how can I slowly and carefully try different manipulations of this? Basically, they trained it over and over again until it had a high accuracy as a deceptive tool. Then they worked that into the 3D model so that anybody that downloads the file and prints it at home, they end up getting this little guy who looks like he's not very dangerous, but he definitely would trigger any kind of camera system that was using this exact model, right? Now, I can't actually say that if you went to TSA that they would be using Google's V3 classifier. In fact, they're probably not. So maybe this wouldn't actually trigger it, but it very well could. And it would have if they were using the same model that was available through Google, right? So, so there's a bit of a chicken or an egg problem. Hopefully, as things like this actually trigger the system, they could actually be given back to the original system to be trained on as a negative example and then this turtle would start classifying as a turtle like it should again. And then the other model would need to start updating itself and trying new things if it wanted to turn this turtle back into it. So it's a complete chicken or egg game, but this is gonna be happening everywhere. People are going to be breaking machine learning systems, machine learning classification systems especially. And then when we learn from that, hopefully we correct, but the systems will always be getting smarter at gaming the system and the systems will always be getting smarter at figuring out who's gaming it. So it's a chicken or egg problem that we're just going Going to have to get used to. Okay, so we'll make sure to link to this URL. This is lab6.org where you can actually see the original posting. And they have a few more pieces of context that are fascinating. Like, look at that. It sure looks like a cat to me. I am very surprised that it sees it as guacamole, but a small rotation? That is a tabby cat. Like what makes it think, whoa, that's a tabby cat. Look at that confidence that it's guacamole. Like that is not guacamole. That is a cute little kitty cat. And you go down here and just turn the head like a little bit to the side and it's like, oh, tabby cat, that's tabby cat. It's like, um, guacamole, tabby cat, guacamole, tabby cat, guacamole, tabby cat. Like, that's crazy. So when we think about the machines, instead of thinking about them the way our brains are and how these objects are existing in the real world, a good way to imagine it is just, I imagine like a shoebox with a bunch of little dots in it. Now, actually it's multi-dimensional, but our brains don't do like multiple dimensions very well. So just imagine it in a 3D environment, so like a box, and imagine a bunch of little dots around, like little flies or something that are just kind of in spaces. And you are like a little spaceship, maybe they're planets and you're like a little spaceship and you're closest to one of the planets. So that's what the class is doing. It's actually just saying like, here's the space where I think I am, whatever object I'm closest to is what I'm gonna classify the object as. So when it sees something like this, it's probably close to a turtle, right? The three turtles that it kept classifying before probably grouped together very closely, very far away from things like cars and airplanes and shoes. Like it sees that it's in that neighborhood and whatever it's closest to is how much confidence it has. So in that case, 
we call it a latent space, right? They, it's actually a statistical model that's making it classify things. So that's the reason why sometimes you can have the space kind of corrupted in a non-perfect way. And what the other system will do is notice some of the weirdness in it and find ways to perturb the model, meaning make small changes so that it thinks it's in a space very far from where it really should be. All right, thanks guys. So make sure you're very careful with what you print out. You know, you might be giving a gift to someone not knowing that that has been perturbed in such a way that it will not show up in a camera vision system as what it seems like it should. And as promised, here is the latest in text to image generation. In fact, Mid Journey has been upgraded to V4, so check out these wicked images that were generated from the text prompt. A cute little non-threatening turtle shooting a rifle. And if you guys wanna leave in the comments comments below what text to image you would like generated in the next video, I'd be happy to do it. Thanks for watching.